Good morning, everybody. This is Brian Price coming at you today with Value of Truth. And I wanted to discuss with you a couple topics today. This December 23rd, 2020, I know this has been a rough year. I uh, lost a very good friend of mine about a month ago. It was November 24th, 2020. And I wanted to do this in honor of him, Chris Messer. Uh, God rest his soul. We grew up together. We went. We were in the military together, and unfortunately, uh, he took his own life. And I want you to know out there, if, if if you're dealing with that same temptation, which we all do, everyone deals with that temptation, um, especially men in particular. It's a very problem. It's a very huge problem, especially among Caucasian white men. Um, and I just want you to know that, uh, if, if you're dealing with that temptation, the only way to overcome that is to pray, is to seek God's face, is to tell God, uh, how you're, how you are feeling and to pour out your emotions to him and tell him, look, God, I, I want to live and I want to overcome this. And uh, God will renew your sense of hope. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, So the first topic I wanted to discuss with you is the topic, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to do. This kind of, excuse me, this kind of ties into that topic in a sense of, you know, when, when life hands you problems, and we all go through problems, good people, bad people. You know, the question becomes, well, why do bad things happen to good people? And the answer is, well, bad things happen to everybody. It doesn't just single out good people. Why do the good die young? You know, that kind of thing. Well, it's not necessarily that the good die young or bad things happen to good people. It's just these bad things happen to everybody. So, you know, the, the point of this podcast or this video is to try to help you overcome uh, the problems of life. Um, Jesus said, he that overcometh shall sit in the throne with me, even as I also overcame. You know, and and Jesus said, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He said that to, I think it was Antipas. No, who did he say it to? He said, said it to one of the churches in Revelation. But it still applies to us today. If you, if you will be faithful to the end, Christ Jesus will give you a crown of life. But the topic, going back to the topic at hand, when you don't know what to do. And I wanted to discuss with you the story of Jehoshaphat. And the story can be found in Second Chronicles. Is it Second Chronicles? Yes, Second Chronicles chapter number 20. And essentially what happens here in this story is King Jehoshaphat uh, hears of uh, this great army coming against him and his people. And in this situation, they don't know what to do because they don't have the army or the means to defeat this, this multitude, to, to defeat this army. So they begin to do what any rational person would do, and that is pray. They sought God in this time of, of trial in this time of temptation, uh, when they were overwhelmed, you understand, they sought God out. And it says here, it, it lays out the prayer that they prayed to God. It says, behold, I say, verse 11, behold, I say, how they reward us to, to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. They said to God, look, we don't know what to do in this situation. This is, this is beyond us. And so God gave an answer with one of his prophets, and, he, and the prophet said, hey, this is not a battle you need to fight in. Just stand still and see the salvation of God. So and the next day, uh, the king goes out and tries to comfort, you know, the people. And he's like, look, he says, uh, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you prosper. Or excuse me, he said, in, what is it, verse 20? 
It says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And then the Bible goes on to say that when the army came against them, that God rose in ambush up and took them all out. And they were all dead bodies. And the people went on to spoil those dead bodies and take all the jewels and the, and the precious things that were on those people on the, on the army. Took it off the dead bodies. And so you see here an example that God saved his people from an insurmountable situation, an impossible situation. They were outnumbered, outgunned. There was no way out here. You understand? And they were in great distress. They were, it, it was a life and death situation. And God saved them. Why? Because they trusted in him. They believed in him. They prayed to him. They asked him for salvation. Now, if, if you don't pray and you don't ask God for salvation, your odds of salvation are much, much lower than if you were to try and ask God for salvation. You're throwing yourself at the mercy of God when you trust in him. You're putting yourself out there and you're saying, Lord God, save me. And he will save you. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a promise. That salvation is promised to those who call upon him. And so in good faith, trust in him. Trust in him in your situations of trial and insurmountable odds. Now, does that mean God is going to come to your rescue and save your football team from a defeat? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You know, in matters of sports, it's different. But in matters of life... You know, God will save you. Trust him. Believe in him. Believe his word. He will save you. Now, the second topic I wanted to talk about is the importance of repentance. Why is repentance important? And I wanted to discuss with you that matter of repentance because it is a subject not much talked about in uh theological circles, especially among modern churches. They want to focus on other things that are, I guess, less controversial. You know, the real, the real matters that are important are the love of God, faith, and repentance. Without those three things, you don't have the gospel. God requires us to have faith. God requires us to love him. And God requires us to repent. That's just the way it is. And what does it mean to repent? Repentance is an apology. It starts with an apology. God, I'm sorry. That's where repentance starts at. Now, if you can start there, then you can work your way to uh, physical repentance, which is turning from your wicked ways and doing, doing what is right. Uh, Ezekiel goes through that. The book of Ezekiel talks about Turn ye, turn ye from your wicked ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? He's asking the question, why, why would you rather die? Why do you want to die? Why don't you want to live? Isn't life beautiful? Isn't it amazing? The, the, the green trees, the blue skies, the sunshine, the birds singing, you know, love is in the air, you know, things, things that make life beautiful and worth living for. So, God says, why will you die, O house of Israel? Don't let iniquity be your ruin. Now, I want to talk about repentance, and I wanted to grab it from the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, and I wanted to turn your focus to the rich man in hell. The Bible says that, uh, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. And was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. 
Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, that lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. I wanted to turn your attention here to the last thing that the rich man said. He said, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. The last thing he said was talking about repentance. I think what was on the rich man's mind at first was, oh my gosh, I'm in hell and I'm burning. Father Abraham, send send Lazarus to cool my tongue. But the last thing on his mind was repentance. That's why a lot of people end up in hell. It's because repentance is the last thing on their mind. They don't want to think about it. Why? They don't want to apologize. You see, a lot of people, um, when they get to jail for crimes they commit, the question often comes up, do they feel any remorse for what they did? People want to know that. They, they want to know, when, when we send this person to jail, is he going to feel remorse? Will he regret what he did? And a lot of them, you know what the sad thing is? Is that they don't. They don't regret what they did. And I often wonder, I wonder, does the rich man regret the life he lived? You see, repentance wasn't the first thing on his mind. You see, when we read in Scripture, we don't see that the first thing uh, the rich man said was, God, have mercy on me. He didn't say, God, have mercy on me. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Why didn't he say, God, have mercy on me? The one who could get him out of that situation. I wonder. I wonder, are, are people in hell, and st- do they stay in hell because they don't go to the one that can save them? I wonder. You know, so the matter, uh, the, the question, or I should say that the topic I'm discussing with you is the importance of repentance. Don't, don't go to hell because you didn't want to repent. You didn't feel remorse. Understand that the life you're living is offensive. You're offending God who loves you, who gave his son to die for you. And you're just going to snub your nose at God and say, well, I'm just going to do what I want. That's really how you want to live? Is that really how you want to live? Think about it. Think about the consequences here for a moment. Hell, a place of burning. Now we see that Abraham and Lazarus, they were just fine. It says, now he is comforted, but thou art tormented. Lazarus was just fine. He was a beggar. He lived a life of of severe poverty, but he was saved. He repented. He believed in God. He trusted God. He loved God, apparently. He was in paradise. The rich man, not so much. The rich man had no regard. So don't end up in a place like that because you simply don't regard God. Because you don't care. And that brings me to my last topic, do not deceive yourself. Don't think that, oh, it's all over when you close your eyes. It's not over. It's not over. Oh, I'll just rest in peace. You know, people say, people say, oh, you know, rest his soul. Or they'll put R.I.P., you know, on their tombstone. Rest in peace. My friend, for some people, there is no rest. The Bible says there's no rest for the wicked. And the Bible says in Revelation, it says they have no rest day nor night who take the mark of the beast or the image of his name or the number of his name. You know, they're burning. So don't deceive yourself. Oh, it's all going to be over. No, it's not. Like, what are, you, what, are, what are you trusting in to save you? What do you, what do you, what do you believe? You believe in yourself? Believe in your atheistic views? There's no such thing as an atheist. I know you're not truly an atheist. 
Can't be. There's no way. You cannot deny a God who's, who exists, who is omnipresent. Omnipresent and all-powerful. Here's your thoughts. Knows your, your actions. Knows your every move. There's no possible way that you doubt that he exists. You know why? Because it's like doubting the air you breathe. Do I doubt the fact that air exists, the oxygen exists, the sky exists? No. So why would you doubt the existence of God? You know why you doubt the existence of God? Because he hides himself so well. God hides himself so well, you will think there is no God. That's why you're an atheist. Because you really don't know. Because why? Because God hides himself from you. But, you know, God also offers a promise to you that uh, if you seek him, you will find him if you search for him with all your heart. That's the key there. You have to want to find him. You know, God wants us to love him willingly. He doesn't just want us to follow him blindly. He wants us to willingly love him. And if you're not willing to do that, you're on your own. So don't deceive yourself. Don't just think, oh, it's all over. It's not over. It's, it's not over. You don't know. You don't know what lies beyond death's door. You have no idea. You don't have a clue. You know, I, I, I wonder. I wonder about people. Do they embrace death with boldness and wake up in hell with, with a surprise? Or do they, do they jump into hell knowing it's there? I don't know. You know, but Jesus turned and said to the thief on the cross who said, Lord, remember me. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. In paradise. Now, why would Jesus say that if he was dying on the cross? If Jesus was right there. You know why? Because Jesus was going, Jesus is omnipresent. He's God. He was going to take that thief when he died and take him to be with him in paradise. The Bible says to be with Christ is far better. And you know why he took him to be with him in paradise? Because he believed. He believed the gospel. He believed that Jesus was more than a man. He was, he was God. He was the Lord. That's why he said, Lord, remember me. You can read about that in the Gospel of Luke. Guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions for me that you would like answered, leave a comment. God bless you. I'm Brian Price.